Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, I'm going over the basics of return oriented programming on ARM and showing you guys how to write a simple ROP chain to exploit a vulnerable program. So uh, ROP is basically a more modern exploitation technique. It's used in modern exploits, uh, including iOS jailbreaking. So it's a very um, useful thing to learn if you're interested in exploit development. And uh, it's much more suited to doing real world um, tasks and exploits, um, unlike the previous videos I've done on exploits. So um, in this video, we'll be exploiting a basic, simple program using ROP. Um, we'll be doing this on an ARM v7 device, so you can use an iPhone, which I'm going to be using. I'm going to use an iPhone 4, um, but you can use any other ARM v7 device. So um, yeah, once you've got your device, um, you're ready to go ahead and get started with this. So before watching this video, hopefully you're already familiar with a classic stack buffer overflow and how to jump to a new function or to shellcode, because this is sort of the foundation of ROP. So um, if you don't already know, I'll briefly explain it. Um, stack buffer overflow works by overwriting um, important values on the stack, uh, one of which being the program's return address. And then when this value is popped back into the program counter, the program will jump to whatever you set it to. So you can basically change the program execution flow and uh, jump to a new function. And that's what my previous video covered. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to watch that. Um, now ROP is very similar to this, it does involve overwriting the uh, return address and then jump into it, but rather than jump into a single function, ROP allows you to basically chain together small parts of several different functions in order to complete a task. So this is more suited to real world applications, um, you'll very unlikely ever find a case where you'll just need to jump to one function, so um, yeah this is a good thing to learn. So, so that you guys can follow along with the tutorial, I've already uploaded the ROP Level 1 program, which is the program we'll be exploiting in this video, to this GitHub repo. So go to here, Exploit Challenges, I'll leave a link in the description, and download roplevel1.zip. So there might be other ones here by the time you're watching this, make sure you download Level 1. And um, extract it, inside you'll see the Matro file, and um, so you pretty much do have to run this on an iPhone. If you want to run this on Linux, I believe you need an ELF executable, so I can provide the source code as well. But um, yeah, just download this, move this over to your device, and you're ready to go. So you can choose how you decide to communicate with your device. You can use mobile terminal on the device itself, or you can use SSH on your Mac or Windows or Linux PC to do this. So to do this on a Mac, just type SSH space root at, followed by the IP address. So make sure the device is on the same Wi-Fi, and um, enter. Enter the default password, or if you've changed it, the default is Alpine, and we're in the root. So I've downloaded the ROP Level 1 to VAR Mobile LS, and you will see ROP Level 1 right here. So to run this, you just simply want to dot slash the name, enter, and you will see the program. Now you'll notice here it does use the gets vulnerability again. That's because this video is not really focused on the actual vulnerability research, it's more about the exploitation technique after the vulnerability has been discovered. So this ROP can be used with any vulnerability really, it doesn't have to be this gets one, this is just for the simplicity of this video. So you can see here, welcome to ROP level 1 for ARM, um, and it gives you the warning that gets is unsafe, then it's waiting for an input. So let's just type hello, enter, and it says everything seems normal, then exits normally. So that's how the program basically works. Um, we already do know that this is vulnerable, and uh, if you've seen the previous video, which you should have, you'll know how we exploit this already. So we will actually need um, a disassembler of some kind to analyze the assembly code from this program. So you can use GDB, you can use Radara 2. Um, I've got both installed. I won't actually show you guys how to install them right now, but there are many tutorials online. So um, GDB is a little bit quicker. So let's just type GDB space ROP level 1 return. And then once you see this GDB prompt, you can type disass main, and that will disassemble the main function. So you can see the assembly instructions here, as well as their addresses. Now, uh, this ROP level 1 challenge is only very simple. There's no uh, ASLR or anything on this, so you don't have to worry about the randomization of these addresses. They all stay the same. Um, so yeah, here is the assembly code for the main function. Uh, I'll tell you guys as well, we also have secret function just like in the other one. You can see the assembly code for secret, but there's also another function this time. So this one's called change. This has changed. There's actually three functions in this code. Um, and I will actually show you the source code just to let you understand this a little bit better. 
So here is the source code of the ROP Level 1 program. You can see the three functions, we've got change, secret, and main. So main is where the vulnerability is. You can see here the gets vulnerability. This is basically what allows us to exploit this program. You should have already seen the previous video on how to basically uh, exploit this and jump to the secret function. Now, this uh, level ROP Level 1 is not as simple as jumping to the secret function because all that will do, as you can see here, it system string. Now, string is a a variable containing date. So basically the secret function simply just prints out the date. It runs the date command which prints out the current date and time. Now that's not very useful uh, to an attacker. So what we can do in this example program is first of all jump to change which changes the string to ls instead of date and then jump to secret function which will now run system on ls instead. So this will basically list um, all the files in the current directory. So that's slightly more useful than date. Now I know it's still not very uh, useful in real world situations, but um, you could do more creative things with this um, with the underlying concept of ROP. So the goal for this is to jump to change and then to jump to secret. So um, to do that, I'll explain a bit about how ROP works. So you'll notice, um, I have a little diagram on the screen right now, uh, just like a classic stack overflow, you can see that if we overwrite, uh, we put some A's, some B's, and then we put the return address. So just put, let's say that the address right there, B8EC, is the address of a function, or a very small function. You can see that that arrow points to some code. It will do something with the registers, move R1, R7. And underneath that we have RET, which is a return instruction. Now on ARM, you don't actually have um, a return instruction like that. That's not actually an existing instruction. You have that on x86. ARM return instruction is slightly more complicated than that, but I'll explain it in a little while. But you can see that if it does have that return instruction, after this function is finished executing, this return instruction will look to the next value on the stack and it will attempt to jump there because it thinks that's its return address. So if we actually, instead of only putting one value to jump to a function, you can actually just put a lot of values together and uh, your program should basically jump to each one and uh, you can continue going in the forever loop. So you can see there's a second value added there, A, B, C, D. Once, the, once that first function is returned, it's going to look at that value and it's going to jump there. So that can continue executing some new code in some other function. So with this, you don't actually even need to jump to completely new function. You can jump to small parts of uh, different functions. And these are called gadgets, ROP gadgets. So um, you may find something that just moves one value into a register and then returns. So um, yeah, you basically can go on forever doing this. So that's basically how ROP works. Now for this example, we only need to chain together two functions. We need to chain together chain, uh, sorry, change and secret. So that we change the string to ls and then we call the system. So um, that's basically what this example is going to cover. Alright, so before we actually write this ROP chain, we're just going to quickly check that the program is vulnerable. We do know it's the exact same as the previous program, so we know it is, but we'll just do it just for the sake of it. So we're just going to run ROP level 1. We're going to enter a patterned input that's clearly bigger than 12 characters, so we'll just do AAA, BBBCC, and uh, we'll do it up to G. We'll enter that. And you can see we get the segmentation for 11, meaning we're trying to access memory that is just simply invalid. Um, so the program did crash. Now to analyze this crash report, we're just going to open a new tab. Um, and we're just going to log back in as root. And you want to go to uh, cd to var slash logs slash crash reporter. and you will see the crashes of all the recently crashed programs. Now we want to find the latest crash for ROP level 1, so you can see it's this one here. And uh, you want to you want to open up the symbol uh, the symbolicated one, not the syslog. You don't want syslog. Um, so just copy the name of this file the symbolicated IPS and then do cat space that name enter and here you go, you get the crash log. So a lot of this stuff is unneeded information. You don't need to really worry about any of this stuff. Just want to scroll to the top area you'll see some information about the app that crashed and the platform is running on and uh, then you'll see the exception type which is basically the reason it crashed so you can see kernel invalid address at 0 46, uh, 46, 46, 46, 46. so this basically means we overwrote the return address with f so um, that just proves that the return address would be right here so in our actual exploit string we want this amount of characters 
then the return address, and then the program will attempt to jump to it. And if it is valid memory, then obviously it will continue executing. And uh, beneath that, you can see the other registers, so the stack pointer, the link register, and all the other ones. All right, so we know that it's at uh, location F, the return address. So uh, let's just quickly test the exploit I used in the previous video, where we just jumped to one function. So we're going to jump straight to secret. We're not going to bother with the uh, the change thing yet. We'll just just prove that this program is exploitable. So um, to do that, we're going to need to enter hex values. So we'll use printf to pipe it in. So do printf space speech marks. Enter the string up to the e's. And then we know that after the e, the next four characters will be the return address. So we want to put the address of secret. So here's the start address of secret, this first instruction. And remember, this is a little endian platform. We need to enter each byte in reverse. So instead of 0000BE70, it will be 70BE0000. So backslash x 70 B E 0 0 0 0. Close speech marks and then pipe it into rot level one. Okay, so you can see this time instead of it crashing, we get executing string and followed by the current date and time. So that does prove that we execute the secret function, it executed the date command using system. So uh, that proves the exploit does work and the program is vulnerable. Now what we can do is make the exploit much more useful by listing all the files in the directory by chaining together two functions. So first of all we want to jump to the change function which will change the string to ls rather than date and then we want to jump to secret like we've just done um, and then it will list out all of that. So we, make sure, we need to make sure that they're in order. So um, to do this it's fairly similar to doing this, but you just need to learn a little bit more about the assembly code. So you definitely don't need to be an expert in ARM assembly to be able to do this basic uh, ROP level 1 example, but you just need to understand uh, the first instruction of each of these functions. So you'll see that they all, they all have the same first instruction, and it's push r7lr. Now what this basically does is it sets up the stack so that this program can later on return. Um, and all that means is basically it pushes some ve uh, some values, so in this case the value of R7 and the value of the link register, it pushes those values onto the top of the stack. And at the end of the function, you can see we have the opposite, we have pop, R7 and PC. This does the opposite and it pushes these values off of the stack, or sorry, pops them off of the stack, back into the registers. So, for an example, you can see when the change function is called, it's not actually called in the function, but in the program, but if it was called, it would first of all push uh, R7 the link register onto the stack. The link register contains the return address already. Um, then it would continue with the function. You can see all of this. You don't really need to understand any of this right now. And when it's finished with the function, the last instruction executes is the pop instruction. Now this takes the values back off of the stack and into the registers. So R7, the one would go back into R7, and the one that was in the link register would go back into the PC. Now when it's in the PC, the PC will jump to that instruction because it contains the next instruction to be executed and it will con continue the program execution flow. So if this change function was called by the program, uh, it, it should execute basically and then it should jump back to where it was called from. So hopefully that makes sense. Now basically we need to understand that this is actually not needed for the function to work as it needs to work. This is just to set up the returning. This actually has nothing to do with the function itself. So what we can do is set up the stack ourselves for it with our own uh, value for R7 and our own return address value and then we don't even need to worry about this push thing so then when it does return it will return to whatever we've set up so um, I'll show you that as an example let's do the same thing printf we want our junk characters and then this time instead of the secret address we want the address after the push instruction of the change function so this one so if we jump to this address here, it's basically still going to execute the change function. It won't mess up anything, the fact that we've missed out this instruction. Um, but then it will return. It, this is basically an ARM return instruction. It's not like just a ret word. It's just it pops the values off the stack back into the PC. So this is the return instruction. And um, yeah, instead of using the ones that it's already set up, we can actually set up our own by adding some more addresses after it. So we're just going to put the address, which is 30BE. So we'll do 30B0000. Now the values after this, the next two values are the ones that is expected to have set up itself. 
Now, because it hasn't actually set up itself, whatever is in those places, it's going to pop them back into these registers anyway. So we need to, first of all, the R7 one. R7 is just a, a general purpose register. We don't need to worry about what this is. So um, we'll just put anything here. We'll just put FFFFFFFFF. We don't actually care what R7 is. The one after this is the PC. Now, this is where we want to jump to next. And this is where the execution flow is going to go to next. So we need to make sure that this is something valid. And in our case, we want this to be secret because right now, the exploit, what it does is it jumps to the uh, this address which is just below the push instruction of change, it executes the change function, and then it tries to return, and we want it to return to secret. So we need the start address of secret. So let's uh, find that secret, BE70, just like we used before. So we just do it again, 70, BE0000. Close speech marks, and that is the exploit string done. So that's very basic uh, return oriented programming. Let's just pipe that into the ROP level one to prove it does work. And there you go. You guys can see it says string changed. Then instead of ex uh, instead of just exiting, it now goes to the secret function, executing string, and you can see it does have the changed string. So it's not just the date; it prints out every single file in the current directory that we're in, which is var mobile. So um. Yeah, we've chained together two functions and uh, made them execute one after the other using return oriented programming. So that's just the basics of ROP. Now you can actually do this an unlimited amount of time. You can chain together unlimited amount of functions. All you would need to do is remember that you don't want this push R7LR because that messes up the stack that you've set up. So just ignore this, jump to the thing after it. So if you wanted to do a third function with this, instead of jumping to the start address of secret, which we did, you can jump to the one after it, which will miss out this push thing. And uh, then you can do the same thing and just chain together unlimited amount of functions. So that's actually how uh, jailbreak exploits work. Um, iOS jailbreaking exploits are all written completely in return oriented programming. So you have huge rock chains using um, many different gadgets from all over the place. So um, yeah, hopefully in the future I'll have more time to make some more of these videos, some more advanced versions of this. As I said, I'll leave... Um, a link to this in the description, the, uh, the actual executable, so you guys can try it out. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.